let's get to it. So let's talk about California. Let's talk about California, all right? I really, really, really do want to bring visibility to what's happening in these streets. Uh, let's just spend 10 minutes real quick to speak on California because businesses are closing, but they have a solution. They are starting to come up with what they think a solution is for the real issues and a tax base eroding and it becoming a death loop over there in different cities over there in California. And I want to tell you my opinion of whether or not I think it's a good idea or it's a bad idea. Make sure you hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, tab into the Patreon, link is in the description, as well as pin to the top of the chat. All right? Oh, it's Emperor's birthday, my bad. <laughs> shout out to Emperor, my bad. I could, we call Kojak Emperor Kojak too, but shout out to Emperor, happy birthday to you. Let's get it popping, y'all. Thank you very much. Uh, McDonald's is closing its location at Stonestown Mall in uh, San Francisco. It had been there for more than three decades. Cron Force Sarah Stinson says some customers say they're very disappointed. McDonald's at Stonestown Mall will be closing its doors for good Sunday after more than 30 years. A sign posted on the door notified customers about the closure. At first I hey, why is it that the first thing that people do when they see something closed or it's everything? um that's bad about it why is the first thing that people do is they take a picture what are y'all putting the, what are y'all taking a picture of where are you gonna put the picture I, i'm just confused why is it that the first thing that people do when they see something like a restaurant is closing or something like that is they go out and they take a picture of it where are you gonna post the picture at where are you gonna post a, what what Everything does not require a camera. Everything does not require social media, bro. Everything does not require social media. I'm just saying. I thought it was fake. I, I didn't believe it. I'm sad about this location. It's going to be Shout closing to down. Loyal customers shared stories about eating here over the years. I was a student at San Francisco State University just, just across. So I've been coming here since around maybe 2000. 2003. I'm really disappointed to hear that. Um, more so for my mom than for me because uh, she dearly loves McNuggets and this is one of the few places close enough for me to bring her. The fast food restaurant off of 19th Avenue is packed with people in the final hours of operation. Many saying the mall just won't be the same without it. It's drastically changed over the years, but this is one of the more heartbreaking changes that I think they're making. Because this is uh, one of the places we can hang out together. Maybe so now we don't know where we can go. Yeah. The franchisee owner, Scott Roderick, tells Cron 4 the decision to close the restaurant was a difficult one for his family. Roderick says there are two main factors that led to the closure. One, he says, the landlord was unwilling to negotiate a sensible long-term rent. Second, Roderick says the cost of operating a business is accelerating at historic levels. So what... This anchor tenant did was he went to the landlord. Listen, it's all going to be a trickle down effect. And this is what I keep telling everybody. Why you got to look at this from a business. Do you know why I don't raise the rent on my tenants? It's because I'd rather have a long term tenant that they can benefit as far as making sure that they reduce their costs, which would also incentivize them to take care of the property. And then at the same time, they're able to raise their family in a conducive environment, which would then foster me more profits long term. Now, I could try to maximize the profit out of them and squeeze them and continue to raise the rents up and stuff like that. But I don't because as long as I can cover my property taxes, as long as I'm turning a healthy profit every year because I don't have any mortgages, why wouldn't I work with my tenants? As a matter of fact, I'm going to be proactive in, in preventing them from having to pay more to me just because I can maximize the profit, but then I would become a greedy landlord. And greed can be good, but you can leverage that greed in other ways in order to build more properties instead of continuing to leverage the people and squeezing them. I don't raise the prices in the Patreon. I don't raise the rents on my, on, my, um, on, my, on my properties. I don't even raise the coaching calls. My coaching calls have been the same prices since I've started coaching in a general sense. And so what happens when you start to find this type of situation is that the business owners can't absorb the cost. 
meaning that they can raise the prices, pass it on to the consumers, then they have to start cutting costs in other ways. Either they got to start embracing technology or they have to do or and and or they have to go to the to the landlord and say, hey, listen, we need to renegotiate this lease. We need to lower the cost because I got to pay way more in food costs. I got to pay way more in, in, in minimum wage because my minimum wage, the amount of money that I'm paying people has exploded 50 to 75 percent. And I can't cover this. I can't sell enough burgers and fries and drinks in order to be able to cover and make this profitable. And so either I'm going to have to close or I'm going to have to ask you to take a concession. The person that owned the plaza said, well, we can't take no haircuts because we are absolutely slammed over here because we got to pay more of these California taxes and our interest rates are higher because the Fed has raised rates. And so what you're basically doing is you're creating a doom loop. The doom loop is, is that it's a trickle down. You know how they say trickle down as far as trickle down economics? Well, that happens when things are under duress also. And so when you have these legislators that don't work well with businesses to better understand a business climate in order to create a conducive environment for both the workers, the taxpayers, and the state itself, everybody loses. The state is going to lose money in its coffers. People are going to start fleeing from the city. Businesses are going to start closing. Landlords aren't going to be able to pay the rent. Interest rates are going to be high. And so it just be, it creates this, this circle effect to where, hey, man, don't be the last one left and turning the lights out over there in California. Don't be the last one left to turn the lights off in California. The ones that are going to lose are the ones that's going to be the last ones out. He says it became extra challenging to stay open after the state's $20 minimum wage mandate went into effect on April 1st for fast food restaurants. Roderick says all of his employees have been offered jobs to work at nearby McDonald's. There's another location about a mile away, as well as other fast food chains at the food court inside the mall. But longtime customers say this closure hurts their routine and wallet. One of the last places where I could get a hamburger for $1.99 in, in the 2024 economy, so. I'm Sarah Stinson. Yeah, you can forget that. Meanwhile, uh, a lot of dis different businesses, it's not just McDonald's, but businesses all across the entire state are basically going out of business. Downtown Sacramento seeing more doors closing as others open. Owners say with prices skyrocketing, it's keeping customers away and putting people out of business. Thanks for joining us here at 530. I'm Hunter Sowers. And I'm Tony Lopez. Let's get to it. Your reporter covering Sacramento County, Tori Apodaca, getting answers on the state of downtown Sacramento right businesses. Tori. Tori. Like her hood, Hey, you guys, it's definitely no secret that concerts at the Golden One Center and, of course, basketball games bring a lot of business to this downtown area. But whether it be chains like Starbucks just across the street from us or Solomon's Diner just a few doors down on K Street. Let me say this. I did announce this in the beginning. I see Slimmy saying a Q show later. Listen, a Q is on vacation, so we're not going to live stream tonight. I'm going to try to get a show ready for y'all premiered uh, for y'all that I was going to have on Wednesday, but I'm going to try to get that ready for y'all tonight. Q was on vacation. We're going to go back to live streaming on Monday nights. Plus, it'll give y'all some time to miss her because I don't know if y'all really appreciate her. Uh, again, the Q show is not going to live stream tonight. She's on vacation out of the country enjoying herself, so we want to give her that time. But in the meantime, I'm going to try to get a replacement show in for y'all uh, to premiere and move it from Wednesday up to Monday, move it up a day in order to be able to add value into your life. All right? So just giving y'all a little bit of insight. Shout out to Slimmy. Coming a lot more difficult for some businesses to stay open. Thank you. There is a steady lunch rush inside Kadaiko Ramen and Bar on K Street. But co owner Takumi Abe says with the price of everything going up, <laughs> businesses are choosing between passing the cost along to customers or close down. It's really tough. I feel really fortunate that we're still here. Just a few feet away, Solomon's Vinyl Diner, established as a tribute to Tower Records, abruptly shut its doors this week after just hosting a disco brunch for Father's Day in Peyton Sip days before. It looks like it's always busy all the time. That's why I had a chance to check it out. Solomon's co-owner, Jamie Goldstein, cites the pandemic, loss of foot traffic, and labor and food costs rising as the reason for what she hopes is just a temporary closure. And chains are also closing, like three Sacramento Starbucks locations, including the one in Doco and the Hyatt.
deputy director of downtown. I know a lot of y'all saying, oh, it's healthier to cook at home. That's not the that's not the whole point. The point is, is that when you don't have money circulating in your community and businesses start closing, regardless of whether or not you actually agree with the business or not, um, when businesses start closing, it creates a worse environment for the residents because everything effect, uh, eventually is going to affect you too. It affects police budgets, it affects uh, home prices, it affects property taxes, it affects homelessness, it affects social services, um, Everything is going to be impacted when you start to see small business. Small businesses is the core, is literally the, the, the backbone of America. And when you see so small business, you can't get enough big box stores to replace what's happening with, with small businesses. And when I say small businesses, a lot of y'all will say, oh, well, McDonald's isn't in small business. Yes, it is. McDonald's largely have franchisees that run small businesses that then uh, basically, you know, is a part of the fabric and the core of what's happening in the community. So yes, I agree with you. It is healthier to do it at home, but at the same time, you don't want to artificially kill businesses with bad legislation. Let them be able to survive and thrive on their own. If the business is not good or y'all don't agree with what it is you know, that you're eating, then let that be the reason because then what will happen is it'll make an environment where it's easier for something else to come up in there that will replace it, that will replace it that's better for your taste palate or better for your health or whatever. Like the, the environment that is conducive to small business has to thrive because otherwise nothing will replace it. You see what I'm saying? So it's not about whether or not the small business is there or not. It's the why. Because if there's nothing to replace it because it's bad legislative policy that prevents small business from thriving in general, regardless of what type of business it is, you as a resident, as a consumer, you are the ones that are going to suffer within your communities. Sacramento Partnership, Scott Ford, says over the past 12 months, they have seen over 31 million visits to the central city. That's about 80% of what it was pre-pandemic. You know, losing, you know, you know, foot traffic here and everything, so it's kind of, it makes it look kind of a little ghost town-ish. So what's going to get people to come downtown? We're going to need a mix of uses. Ford says even though we see some doors closing, other unique business ideas are opening. This is a neighborhood that we are creating together. Got to change the legislative policies. Nothing is going to happen. Back out here live, of course, the lights out on Solomon's Diner. Uh, according to RealtyCompany.com, this building is actually listed for sale. I asked the owner about this today, and she there, could not confirm if that is true, saying that she hopes that this place here gets a second life. Of course, though, that's not the case for a lot of other businesses down here that have closed for good. I'm telling you, listen, even the people that own the buildings is like, listen, I'm getting up out of here. This is just not even this is not even a thing. So uh, San Francisco has come up with an idea. And so let's explore what San Francisco is doing. It may say for lease, but this retail shop in the heart of downtown San Francisco is taken. The boxes on the floor and glass peeking through are signs that the nonprofit Public Glass is setting up shop. To be in downtown San Francisco is really about visibility for us. Their main location is in San Francisco's Bayview neighborhood, but now they're expanding as part of the city's vacant to vibrant program. It would be impossible without it, right? So, um, like many organizations and institutions, we contend with the rents in San Francisco. Listen, they have this vacant to vibrant program that they're basically trying to fill up businesses with or fill up storefronts um, and empty, empty spaces down in, in downtown San Francisco. And they're trying to use that and leverage that. So basically what they're going to do is they're going to say, listen, we're going to give you three months free. If you come in and you be able to start a business and open up a business here in downtown San Francisco, well, it's not going to be viable because after three months and then the rent kink in, it's still going to be the same thing. You still have bad legislative practices. You still have crime everywhere. You still have homelessness. You haven't solved for the core reasons why businesses are closing in the first place. It don't matter if you give them six months rent, a year's month's rent. Once they start paying, they won't be able to sustain the business. So the vacant, the vibrant is really a bad idea. Uh, it only incent. Listen, that the free months only works when you have something that they'll be able to sustain for a longer period of time. We still haven't addressed the biggest issues that's happening in society, especially over in California. And as long as you have these idiots running things, then it's always going to be bad. So 
It's all bad. It's no point even looking at this. So anyways, that's what's happening over in California. Uh